Americans have the superlative highest unemployment rate. Opinion? This is not good. In fact, this is my opinion. Know the facts. Know the facts. Know the facts. If you can't, be worth, if you can't get the facts, at least watch the news. Good evening. Our top story. A homeless fire in San Francisco has kept dozens homeless today in San Francisco. <laughs> the fire began early this morning around 3 when a homeless person caught fire near the Van Ness exit to the 80 freeway. Within minutes, other homeless people came by to warm their hands, only to catch fire themselves. And by sunrise, almost 50% of San Francisco's homeless were ablaze. Fire Chief Greco Roman. Uh, we are doing all we can to contain this fire. Uh, unfortunately, since a lot of them use cardboard, they do tend to be quite flammable. <laughs> Recent reports suggest that if the fire is not contained, San Francisco could stand to lose almost all of its natural homeless. Uh, it's a very beautiful area. Uh, a lot of people move out here specifically for the homeless. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> fires like this tend to be common. Police and fire officials have ruled out the possibility of arson. Police Chief Bart Deco. Uh, we, have, uh, we have no reason to believe at this time this is a case of arson. Uh, what usually happens is uh, some careless individual leaves a cigarette burning on a homeless person. Uh, somebody might have been trying to cook something with a homeless person and accidentally left the homeless person on. <laughs> fire and safety officials have advised that if you're in the vicinity of the homeless fire, just stay indoors, take a hot bath, relax in bed, and eat three square meals a day. Social worker and community activist Phil Noir. Uh, sometimes all you can really do in a situation like this is reflect on all the good things that you have in your life that other people don't. Um, I know in my case, when I see a homeless person on fire, um, I go home and I write a gratitude list. And right at the top of the list I put, I am not on fire today. <laughs> when we return, we'll have more on the fire, on the hot, steamy fire that's burning inside me now and making me a very bad do you like hot, wet, drippy pussies? Are you ready for the most fantastic, cum-filled night of your life? How would you like to jizz all over your cum? If you like hot, girl-on-girl -girl dominatrix action, then come to the Berkeley Center for Cultural Expression this Saturday. <laughs> Where the UC Berkeley Feminist Council is presenting a week-long study, Subverting the Patriarchy, Restoring Female Sexuality to the Female Body, featuring poetry and burlesque performance art by some of the Bay Area's most shameless, incest-surviving, sexually abused whores, who will do just about anything to get your dick hard and pointy, and reawaken women to themselves as sexual creatures. If you like loose, drippy pussy lips and strap-on dildo titty-fucking, this is the seminar for you. It's time for women to speak out and spread those legs and expose those yearning, quaking pussies in the spirit of feminine liberation. Stop the objectification of women and take part in this important seminar that'll show you how to finger fuck yourself into cum shooting oblivion. It's all girl on girl action in the name of fucking and sucking and awakening women to themselves as fuckable cum filled orifice possessors. If you like to fuck or you like to be fucked, come to the Berkeley Center for Cultural Expression this Saturday. Cost of admission is only $10, half off the rim job. <laughs> I'm sorry, that, that laugh. Did, did you hear that laugh? Somebody, somebody in this theater tonight has the most beautiful laugh that I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, did you not hear it? I certainly did. It was only on this side. Could, could I have this side? <laughs> laugh again, please. <laughs> Over here. It was this side, yes, yes. Could I have this side laugh again, please? Oh, yes. The most beautiful laugh that I've ever heard. The laugh that could take away the single before all of the trials and tribulations is my lot life. See, ladies and gentlemen, when one decides to become a comedic performer, as I have chosen, one does so because they are engaged in a lifelong pursuit for that one elusive, fine, Angelic. Yes, there it is again, yes. That ever-elusive laugh. We may say it's for fame or fortune. A chance to be on last comic standing, perhaps. But... Oh, yes. Yeah. But beneath these external desires lies a desire much greater, much more authentic. The desire to hear firsthand that laugh thought to exist only in dreams and faded legends. You see... 
much like the lost city that Landis comedians for eons have searched in vain for this laugh. And why? Because 50 million regular, ordinary, base comedy club laughs cannot hold a single candle to that one laugh of immaculate design. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have heard that laugh here tonight in this section. <laughs> no, it is over here in this section. Yes, I've got it. Yes, yes. yes, yes. It's, over. it's this row, right? And I have this row. Now we're going to show us row. Yes, it's this group of four right here. Yes, that's this group of four. This really empty space, which I'm really out. Yeah. One of you is the chosen one. <laughs> And there can be only one, for if there are more than one of the chosen ones, you will not be the chosen one, you'll be one of the chosen ones, whatever. <laughs> you, sir. May I hear your laughing? <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> no. <laughs> Horrid, grating, the sound of silverware being scraped on a plate, the laugh of an animal, Laughter without opposable thumbs and the capacity for reason. A subhuman laugh one degree removed from vegetable pitiful. And you, my dear, please. <laughs> Even worse. <laughs> Vile, shrieking. <laughs> Laughter infested with venereal disease. <laughs> If syphilis were capable of laughter, I'm sure it would have a sound not like that which has just been issued from your lips, atrocious. <laughs> and now you are. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And it should happen here of all places, of all times. Ladies and gentlemen, my father. <laughs> How many years has it been, father, the day I left home and you broke my nose with a shot that? <laughs> I often dreamed that you would see me in those cities that you were born. So, you with your Midwestern farmer's mentality, your calloused workman's hands. Oh, Father, I wanted you to see me in that audience. Me on stage, in front of brick wall, and behind microphone, the smell of chicken wings in the air. <laughs> oh, Father. No, it's not that one, it's you. <laughs> oh, Father, oh, Father. Oh, Father. I often wondered, Father, what your laughter must have sounded like before Vietnam and the draft took it all away. I often wondered what your approval must have felt like. Would it be as soft as ermine fur or as coarse as a hair shirt? But more than all this, Father, I often wondered what you would look like as a woman. <laughs> and now I know. How this must have troubled you, this secret that you kept locked away in your breast at first flat, now not. <laughs> this transgender chaos that was your life, I understand now. I understand it all, Father. You need not have worried. For I accept you, <coughs> as your laughter has shown that you now accept me. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid there is no need to continue any further with tonight's performance. For you see, the psychological impetus which has propelled me into this business in the first place has now been sated by my father-mother's love. <laughs> In fact, there really is no need to continue doing this accent. I don't need to pretend to be anybody. I am now whole and complete. There's no need to finish this bit, really, either. It's, I don't need to keep pretending this poor woman's my father. And, and you see, ladies and gentlemen, the sad truth is, you guys have been such a wonderful audience that the worst thing that could have ever happened to a comedian has just happened to me. I've become happy. <laughs> Is he insane or what? Bill Franklin.